Hi, everybody. I'm Mel Dor, the Aloha Shirt Psychic. And um, excuse my Hawaii hat, but, you know, it's a bad hair day. And I'm feeling kind of like, <clears throat> you know what? Uh, anyway, I'm happy because I have Arthur, Intuitive Arthur, who is a psychic. And um, if you want to contact him... You can do so at 310-494-5955 for readings. And I would get a reading from him because he's read from me and he is phenomenal. Um, <clears throat> or if you want to go to his website, uh, it's Arthur, A-R-T-H-U-R, -R, Ease Your Mind, E-A-S-E. Y O U R mind M I N D dot com, and all that will be below. Thank so you. go to his channel and hit subscribe. <laughs> you have a channel, right? <laughs> yes, yes, of course. It's, it's... Subscribe, um, and thumbs up. <clears throat> and if you like what we're doing on my channel, go below and hit subscribe and thumbs up. <clears throat> when I, I tell everybody I'm here because of you. Oh, I didn't do anything. Because you had told me, and I forget you said you should do a YouTube channel. First thing out of my mouth was, Are you on crack? <laughs> and then you said, Do you do guided meditations? So that's what I've done is the guided meditations. Oh, that. Yeah, that's right. I know about that. The guided meditations, everybody's amazing. Uh, so you got to check them out. They're really, really good. Uh, I used a bunch of them when I was going through cancer. So. Oh, I'm glad. I'm glad. Um, the doctor said, what are you taking? I go, I'm not going to tell. <laughs> <laughs> but that's that's not candy in my Pez dispenser. <laughs> no, I told her, I, you know, I said, uh-oh, that is YouTube reminding me that we're doing a show. <laughs> okay, not YouTube. I'm sorry, Zoom. Um, they're very good meditations. Seriously, I told the doctor about them. She's like, whatever works. And I'm like, you got it. So, anywho. Um, so I'm actually going to the studio on Thursday this week. I have two more. One is for um, Awaken Intuition. Yeah. And the other one is Unleash Your Creativity. Okay, so everybody, you got to call Arthur <clears throat> and and get a reading. He's really good. You, so, I'm sorry you're uh, not up to snuff, but uh, I, was in, I was in bed all weekend with migraines, so... You know, um, I, I've done television shows with 103 temperature. <laughs> That's oh, when I was, that was when I was younger and stupid. <laughs> now you'll just do it with the filter. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay. So shall we get started? Why not? Okay. L flower one stars says, Mark Meadows just received immunity today. Now, many of us predicted that Mark Meadows would flip when he was first indicted and a, a bunch of us. And it was like, okay, when, 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 when. But here we are. He received immunity today, even though she says, even though I would rather have him in jail uh, <clears throat> due to he did not inform anyone ahead of time to avoid January 6th. Do you see any others also receiving immunity? The answer to that is yes. I see two more, and my guides have shown me that for a long time. So uh, the answer is yes. And I think Trump had a very, very, very bad day. Mm. Unfortunate. <laughs> well, I'm being cocky. But... I did a show last night, and I said it's going to look like a commercial for the international house of pancakes because everyone's gonna be flipping like flat chaps uh, and and jenna ellis she just flipped this morning well she flipped but but she was also she pled guilty well no that's part of that's part of the plea deal they no, have to plead I guilty understand, i understand all that but meadows he was he didn't i don't know if he pled guilty but he, he was given immunity from prosecution which means if he's given immunity he cannot plead the fifth amendment Correct. Because the Fifth Amendment says you don't won't say anything that incriminates you. He he pled the fifth or pleaded the fifth, whatever the word is. 
So therefore, he can't say, I'm sorry, he, he was given immunity. So therefore, he can't plead the fifth because what's right. he going to say? They can't prosecute him. The only way they can do that is if he lies. If he lies. But yeah. my feeling, my my feeling is he's not gonna lie. Correct. My guides are telling me he ain't gonna lie. They didn't quite say it that way. I said it that way. <laughs> yeah. I hear so, you. Um, I'm seeing at least two or three other people flipping, and I'm seeing immunity being granted to at least two more people. I don't know if that's in Georgia or in the federal case. I think it's going more toward the federal case in in DC as opposed to the case about the documents with loose cannon. <laughs> I call her loose cannon. <laughs> she is loose cannon. But, you know, I've been saying for quite some time, whatever she does, ignore it. Because Jack Smith is going to get him first in D.C. After this case, her name's going to be Mud. And I see her removed from the bench at some point. Right. And I also get her taking being taken off this case. Uh, oh. Oh. Yay. Yeah. I mean, she's... She's like walking a tightrope right now, trying to do things that won't get her back to 11th Circuit. But my guys keep on showing me that it's close and she's going to slip and Jack Smith is re has everything ready. And she's he so much smarter than her. And he he's anticipating her moves. And he's, you know, he's 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 100 steps ahead in the chess game. And he's going to have her rear end and checkmate. <laughs> well, I've said before, it's all in God's time and Jack Smith's time. Oh, I like that. <laughs> I like that. And also everything that they're pleading guilty for in Georgia. It's and all part of the being saying to Trump, if if you are, are some of these witnesses, you know, if you don't fess up, Okay, your rear end is going to belong to Jack Smith or the Lord. And by the time Jack Smith is done with you, you'll hope your rear end went to the Lord. <laughs> well, I've been saying I'm going to sell patterns on Etsy for um, the jumpsuits. And his will have a little hoodie because we know he's not going to have a case of Aquanet in jail. So He can't have my hat. <laughs> no, no. Oh, yeah. yeah. I wonder what he's going to do with his wispy flip up when he's... Well, I think the alien up there is going to just leave and go back to the mothership. <laughs> but no. So who would want to live up there? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I would say it's to cover his brain, but he doesn't have a brain. Well, like I said one time with Linda's show, I said, well, he wants to be president, but you got to be alive to be a president. You have to have a heart to die. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Okay, no. go on. Um, Lisa Porter says, who do you see as Trump's running mate in the 2024 presidential election? I don't even know if it'll get that far. I'm not getting that far. Seriously. I don't even know. Like who will be his cellmate as opposed to be his running Correct. mate. I don't even know if he'll get the nomination. I mean, there are a lot of middle of the road Republicans that do not want Trump. They do not. And well, they I they curse him behind behind his back. Well, look at what they did against Jim Jordan, who's MAGA. So I kind of think, you know, there's going to be this silent revolution going on behind closed doors with Trump. And I think people aren't going to be afraid of him mm -hmm. you know, after he's convicted and indicted. Or he's indicted, but after he's convicted. Right. And you heard that Emmer stepped down today. Yeah, and I wish he wouldn't have. I mean, I'm not saying I like him, but um, I, you know, <laughs> he was still a denier. I'm sorry. He was a denier. He's in, you know, signed his name to Amicus brief in 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 Texas. Of, you know, quoting, questioning the uh, the outcome of the election. But he didn't. But wait a minute. He, but. He voted against Trump at some point, and that's why Trump didn't want Later him. Later on, but when it first came out, he was a denier. And also, the one I keep on seeing is, now when Austin Scott, he's from Georgia, put his uh, hat in the ring uh, against Jim Jordan, he only got like 80 votes. But then 
as the votes for Jordan were kept on going, he kept on getting less and less and less. By the third time, he only had 80. I like Austin Scott. I'm not saying that's who it's going to be, but I do like Austin Scott. I had good vibes on him. Well, I think behind closed doors in the, to the MAGAs, Trump is still orchestrating a lot of that. Like, you know, oh, yeah. uh, because he he called uh, Tom. What's Tom's last name? Uh, um, Emmer. Em- Emmer? E-M-M-E-R. Yeah, he called him a rhino. Yes. Yeah. And so that kind of did it. So, but I but I do see people are going to stop being so afraid of Trump. Yeah. Um, and I and I do see an end to the MAGAs controlling the house and the country. Oh yes. Oh yes. Uh, so I don't know who is running me. It'll be I don't know if it'll go that far. You know, I, I I think there's a lot of Republicans that don't want him to run. I don't. Well, I also get the, I've been reading for some time. His health is really, you know, he's like one cheeseburger away from, you know, from the. From the heart attack, from the clogged artery ward. Yeah, exactly. Well, I've been saying for, for, for a 215 pound man, you know. I've been saying for a couple of years he's got to watch himself. Yeah, but I really feel can't see a really long future for him. No. So, no. all right. Uh, Kay Reiser asks, "Who or what will get Rump to stay out of House to stay out of House Speaker and other businesses, another business in Congress, another indictment? <laughs> well, our conviction, but um, I mean, he's still trying to run things behind the scenes." Yeah. But that's imploding in his face, too, because the Republican Party and Kevin Chandler had predicted this, that that party would implode. Mm-hmm. And he's right. It is. It is starting to happen. Yeah, and you have, you know, Matt Gates and oh, I see him ousted at some point. Ousted. George Santos is going to be ousted. Bobar is going to be ousted. If Marjorie Taylor Greene wins again in her district, uh, what I'm thinking is that at some point. I see her in deep legal trouble and I see her out and I'll tell you who else is going to end up incarcerated is Santos. Oh yeah. I've been saying he's going to be learning the lines to uh, when you're good to mama, mama's good to you from Chicago. (laughs) The only reason that McCarthy didn't get rid of him is because they needed his vote. They need numbers. But with um, Marjorie Taylor Greene, I'm still waiting for Hunter Biden to sue her. Oh, he will. And he'll yeah, win. That's going to happen. And oh, that's... it's going to be a lot of money, and he'll win. And there's other people that's going to come forward and sue her, and they're going to break her bank. Mm-hmm. Well, apparently her daddy has money, but you know she still dresses like a oligarch's wife. Oh my God, they need to call the fashion police. <laughs> well, if she has any gay friends. They're not being very friendly to her. Yeah, you I look don't... great in that. You look great in that. Wear it. Wear it. <laughs> I don't think that. Her daddy's money. He. I don't think her daddy, if he's got money, is going to be able or going to want uh, to pay if mm-hmm. she has all these lawsuits. She might file for bankruptcy just to keep from paying. But if she does that, then she's going to have to liquefy everything. And she got a ton of money from the PPP loans that she did not have to pay back. Well, uh, I don't know for what, but um, I still see her being investigated and i see her and at some point indicted i'm telling you yeah no i my tragic girlfriend's in trouble there you go or little cloven hooves as i refer to her wonder if they have hairspray (laughs) jail who knows anyway it's it's a clown car but trump is still trying to control things um, and to a degree, I think still is with the house, but, uh, <clears throat> you know, I think, you know, he can still talk behind closed doors, but, you know, once he's convicted, you'd think that would cause him to shut his mouth, but he's, but, you know, with Trump, whenever he's caught doing something, he never owns it. He blames everybody else. So I'll be curious to what he's going to say about, uh, Jenna Ellis, and I'll be curious what he's going to what he's going to say about Mark Meadows because he uh, Mark Meadows I'm sorry because he used to say oh Mark Mark Meadows is a nice guy yeah okay well, well he says no 
He's already denying that he knew Chase and Kraken, you know. I'm sorry, say again. He's already denying that he knew Cheese and Kraken, that, you know, Powell was not my lawyer. <laughs> For so, purposes only. <laughs> it's our humble so, opinions. Anyway, um, it's, it's, well, bad. Powell was his lawyer. And, um, right. I mean, he said even in a, in a tweet or whatever it was, she's part of my team. And yeah. she's skipping too. No, that exactly. Exactly. And I see on the federal case, a couple more people given immunity from prosecution. But I mm-hmm. see, in addition to that in Georgia, I see a couple more people pleading guilty and flipping. So there's all kinds of plea deals. You oh, know, yeah. Trump's going to, he's going to be convicted <clears throat> and he's going to appeal it, but um, he won't win on appeal. And even if, God forbid, he were to get somewhere in, in it's a state charge that he can't do anything. It's not federal. And he's not going to keep his mouth closed for a very long time. No. And I see a judge somewhere. It could be Georgia, because they've already warned him. They are going to hold him in contempt again. And at some point we'll say, okay, you're going to be in the pokey for contempt. And I think this federal judge, I can't think of her name right now, not Luce I mean, Chutkin. But Chutkin. She's going to hold him in contempt as well. Well, the other guy did too, right? For the uh, for the fraud, right? But but he warned him sternly. One of those judges warned Trump sternly to shut his mouth, yeah. right? Because right after he, Trump put something up about one of his staff members or something or one of the defendants. What happened was he put the staff member his the the law clerk was dating secretly Chuck Schumer, which is a lie, right? And. He, the judge said, take that down. He took it down. However, it was still left up on his campaign website. Right. And that's when he called him back in, fined him $5,000 and said, why shouldn't I throw you in jail? And you know who found that was Midas Touch. So then Trump exactly. was touch. But, you know, Trump said he didn't know it was up there. Yeah. Ding, ding, ding. That's my BS bell. He knew it was up there. He, he knows more than what he says. Believe me. He always blames everybody else. And you know when Trump's guilty because he starts blaming everybody else. Exactly. Oh, now he's blaming Midas Touch. Now, now he's on their case. <laughs> and you know what? They're very strong. They're very strong on YouTube. They're a very, very strong network. And you don't you don't mess and with And they're them. lawyers. Exactly. <laughs> Michael Popop, Ben Mansalis, his brothers. Right. Uh, Karen, I forget her name. Um they're, but they do a great job. They they follow through with everything. But what I like what they do also is um, they not only show what Trump's up to, but then they compare it to what Biden's up to. And Glenn Kirshner is good, too. Glenn Kirshner, yes. He's on with Brian Taylor Cohen. Right. Okay. Donna Davis asked, and this is a very good question. Hi, guys. Will the three lawyers that flipped be safe from Trump now? Or will he have them attacked? Well, if he opens his mouth and starts, he's going to end up in jail. So mm-hmm. I don't see any lawyers that flipped on him and future witnesses that will flip on him. I don't see them being injured. I do not predict that. My guides say no to that. <laughs> they might receive some threatening phone calls, but I don't see any mm-hmm. harm to them physically. The way I, well, I think- need to tell Trump to stop that because if people were injured as a result of what he said, yeah, they could go after Trump civilly. Of course, after this New York case, which he's going to lose severely, mm-hmm. um, and they've already frozen all of his assets and stuff in New York. He's not; he wouldn't be able to pitch a tent <clears throat> in a in a in a in a ghetto by the time they'll be done with him. <laughs> He won't have anything left. I see his whole hair falling down. What goes around comes around. I agree. So uh, hold on here. So do you see any harm coming to the, the lawyers at all? No. What I The only thing I was getting here is, and what I'm hearing is that he may quietly behind the scenes, like bad mouth and all that kind of stuff, and we should do something, but he's not going to make it He's not going to put it up on Truth Social. 
Well, even if he does it behind the scenes and doesn't put it on social media, and if that leaks out that he said it, and like let's say he said it to you or me, and we went and said he told us that, that's not hearsay, and that could still get him in trouble. Do you imagine all the subscribers we get? I'm sorry. If that were to happen, could you imagine all the subscribers we'd get? Oh my God. <laughs> Because I think the gag orders go by any social media, any second party, third party, or anything. Like exactly. That. I'm just saying what my guys are telling me. He may try and do that. Oh, he but, will. Of course. But of it's course. not. It's not going to succeed. But you know what? He's going to get caught. Yeah, it's like the guy that gets caught with his hand in the cookie jar. Oh, I'm not getting the cookie for me. I was getting it for you. Yeah. Okay. Well, you're still stealing the cookie. Yeah, exactly right okay this is a good one um where do you see don jr and eric trump in two years <laughs> broke go find me page you know my psychic light bulb just went on oh good and what i see going on they're gonna find out that T. Rump was trying to divert funds to his kids and other avenues so he won't have to pay out so much. And they're going to find that there is a paper trail on that. Mm -hmm. And he's going to be in trouble for that as well. And they can be in trouble if they receive those funds. Right. So that's where I see them. Well, don't forget, they're still working on... Um... The fraud, I mean, Jack Smith is working on the whole thing about raising money for false purposes. Well, yeah. The grift that keeps on grifting. And, you know, that's go that's another whole can of worms that are about to be opened up. Oh, buckle up. It's going to be a wild ride because uh, um, Jack Smith is going to, there's people that are going to turn around and flip on that and witnesses behind the scenes too. Exactly. And you know, Jack Smith is not the type <clears throat> that's just going to throw, you know, what on the wall to see what sticks. He's very thorough. Who's a Virgo? I'm Virgo on the Ascendant. So there you go. There you go. <laughs> um, so I, I see them in trouble. Uh I don't know. I don't know if they'll have to serve jail or if they do, it won't be super duper long, but <laughs> what I get was there'll be some type of punishment and it's not, I don't get a slap on the wrist with these two. No, it'll be more than a slap on the wrist. Yes. All right. Do you see either one of them in jail or both? I actually do. I don't know how long or where, but for what? But I do get when I get around longer than overnight, yes, yeah, and more than a extended vacation. <laughs> but what I also get is that they're good. It's all right, there's lots of perjury stuff coming up around them, too. And you know, you can't talk your way out of that one. And the only way they can talk their way out of it is they flip on their dad. Well. <laughs> I think they'll try to make a deal with them and one will take the deal, the one that's not so smart. <laughs> and the other one probably won't. Um, Weedledee and Tweedledum. Exactly. Uh, it'll be interesting. It'll be interesting to see what happens. But um, Well, I tell everyone, get the popcorn ready. I'll go to Costco, get the tubs of butter. Eat popcorn, drink soft drink, and watch the movie. Mm-hmm. <laughs> One of them might even say they're going to run for political office, and I, I feel that, but it, but they won't run. I don't see them running, but they might say they're going. Well, they may say it in order to get, raise some money. Exactly. and uh, But they better watch, if they're going to raise money for something like that, they better watch how they're going to use it, because they're going to be looked at very, very, very. Oh, they're under microscope. Um, and, you know, uh, the tax people are going to be looking at, in, in addition to New York, but federally looking but, at yeah, the IRS Trump yes. and his empire very, very carefully as well. Mm -hmm. So, yep. I see indictments coming out with that. 
um, you know, my feeling is that he's going to, Trump will lose a civil lawsuit in New York, mm -hmm. but that's a civil lawsuit. But I've got a funny feeling that they're going to turn it over to the state Federal. prosecution and then prosecute it criminally as well. Yes. But then, and then somehow, I, my guys keep on saying, and then somehow it gets into, into federal. I actually feel that Jack Smith has just a list, like a calendar as to when he's going to put stuff out there. Like, you know, he's making a list, checking it twice, knows who's naughty and not nice, you know, that kind of thing. Well, if it was, I always feel after the first, after the first quarter of 2024, that's when a lot of the crap all is hitting the fan. Well, it was, if it was falsely, I forgot what they said. He was falsely inflating properties to get loans, but that i'm not a lawyer but that's bank fraud which is federal that, that yeah exactly but that's what the that's what um new york is about you know no i know but it's a civil law so there's two kinds of law there's civil right. and there's criminal right now it's civil but i see the civil it's crossing over being referred over for criminal mm -hmm. charges in the state of new york and then the feds will pick up on some of it for bank. Exactly. That's how I see it going down. It's a trifecta. I'm sorry? It's a trifecta. <laughs> or maybe more. Yeah. Okay. This is a good one. An uh, Optus student says, has Putin's heart attack been confirmed? I checked that today and they're saying, you know, the Kremlin is saying, oh, it didn't happen, blah, blah, blah. But of course, the Kremlin's going to say that. <laughs> um, I did a show last night and I felt <clears throat> I get a yes on it, number one. Number two, I've been saying for the last couple months, I don't see Putin around after the end of March. I'm not saying it's an April Fool's gag either. I really feel that either health-wise or they take him out, it's the end of March is maybe it'll be the Ides of March. But it's <clears throat> the end of March. I don't, I don't see him. Well, I've been saying for a long time, Trump needs to watch his health and Putin needed to watch his. Mm -hmm. and so I think that there was a heart issue that happened. And I do think he passed out or whatever. But I think the Kremlin is denying it um, because for obvious reasons, you right. know. I mean, he Putin is former KGB from the old Soviet Union. And, you know, when one of their leaders was sick or dying, they would never say, oh, he's well, he's fine, until they croaked. <laughs> and then they kept that secret for a couple of days. <laughs> right. So that's what's going on. That's kind of old order Soviet stuff. Old PR campaigns, that's all it is. Right. And it really is misinformation. Goebbels. Which is what Trump is known for. <laughs> Right, which by the, the Nazis were label. known for. So, I still think that Putin was uh, behind indirectly this Hamas thing in Israel. I agree, one hundred percent. He was plotting with a lot of the countries in the Middle East because if he can create anarchy there, then it takes people's minds off of what's going on in Ukraine. Right. <clears throat> You know, right, and then the more she acts up with Taiwan, and we're looking over there. I, I really feel that he was behind it, and also that the Wagner group I kept them picking up, they were training Hamas. Yeah, and this has been this has been planned for a long time. This was this was a an orchestrated attack, just like when we got caught with our pants down on 9 mm -hmm. one I think is I think Israel might have had some intelligence telling them, but they just thought it wouldn't happen. And look what happened. Yeah. But uh, they also said that I forget where it's, I read this, that the guys from Hamas, when they got to Israel, they had like they knew exactly where to go, like maps and, and all that kind of information. Right. Which to me comes from. Putin, because when they invaded the Ukraine, a lot of the Russian soldiers had information where to stand, what to do, and, and where to go. So it's the same type of, you know. I'm sure they had spies inside of Israel collecting that information, mm -hmm. just like they did in Ukraine. This, You know, that P Putin had been planning that <clears throat> for a long time against Ukraine. But I think this Hamas thing was, you know, part of it was to take everybody's eyes off uh, of Ukraine. Like the magician, you know, he's doing something yeah. in, in the Tarot. He's doing something here 
to, yeah, to divert your engineer so you'll see what he's doing down here. And the fact that it all went down on his birthday. I'm sorry, say again. And the fact that it all went down on his birthday. Right. I mean, you know, it's, it's the D's that <laughs> deceive, divert, detract, distract, divide, and destroy. Uh, and that's what Trump does. That's what Putin does. But, you know, Ukraine will not stop fighting. Oh, and no, 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 no. Not give up. And they're not going to lose this war. I can tell you that right now. Well, I was doing Linda's show, and I, the hit I got was that within two years, Ukraine will be part of NATO. I'm seeing them as part of NATO at some point as well. Yeah, so I was even, gonna, Turkey just too. relented and let Sweden join. Yeah. And um, who else wanted to join Finland, I think? Yeah. And I don't know if they've joined yet, but I see them in NATO. But you know, Trump and Trump wanted to weaken NATO, but that was coming behind the scenes from Putin because if they could weaken NATO, then that would give carte blanche for Putin to start taking over Eastern Europe. Well, it backfired, and it's still going to backfire in a big way. It's like the cartoons where the guy lights the uh, exploding cigar. Right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. All right. Let me see here. My cell phone keeps. Oh. I'll, uh, sorry about that. I'm reading the questions from my cell phone. Okay. Um, Ursula White says, I am gradually starting to see a little more coverage of Biden. Yes. yes. For example, today on PBS, he gave medals for accomplishments in science. Will this, tent, tent, will this trend continue and grow? What do you think? Okay. I get a yes on that. So do I. Um, the thing is, when Trump had his hand into the media, you know, between Fox and Sinclair and all the other stuff, you know, it's not helping them anymore. The, mm -hmm. I mean, it's not helping the uh, the networks. A lot of people are turning against Trump <laughs> now. And I'm telling you, um, with that one network whose name I won't mention, I see a lot more lawsuits, huge lawsuits that they better settle or they're going to lose. And it's going to pretty much bankrupt that network. So, yeah. And it's good that Biden is getting more coverage in the news because it it it, it diverts the attention away from Trump. Right. I also like the fact that, you know, here we don't have a Speaker of the House. All this stuff is going on in the Middle East. He gets on a plane. Let's fix this. You know, that's what a statesman does. You know, a lot of people like from Palestine, the Middle East are angry at Biden right now. Um, but, you know, I, I saw a thing on MSNBC today and they were they were interviewing people that had voted for Biden. And they're, you know, they're saying now they're they're mad because of you know, whatever. But um, I still see, I do not see the Republicans winning the presidency in 2024. I just don't feel it. I could be wrong, but I don't feel it. I <clears throat> Look. Biden's numbers are coming up. Yeah. I was, I when everyone was going about Hillary Hillary, I just said to my friends, don't celebrate just yet. I'm telling you, it's going to be, and I kept on seeing Trump getting in and they wouldn't talk to me. And I'm seeing Biden getting in. I'm seeing the Democrats taking over the Senate and the House. And Hakeem Jeffries is going to shine. Bingo. I've been saying all along, I see Hakeem Jeffries as president. I mean, I'm sorry, as Speaker of the House. That's yes. Something. And at some point, I see Wes Moore in Maryland being president. Hmm. I've always been picking up also some about Gavin Newsom. I don't know if he'd run. He's really good in California. Yeah, he, he's smart. I mean, when he did the, uh, when he was talking to Hannity, he just like wrapped him around his little finger and spit him out. Oh, he's he's much smarter than Hannity. Yeah. <laughs> um. Okay, so I see Biden. Um, his numbers coming up. Yes. You know, um, Linda Grindle had predicted that. I mean, a lot of us have predicted his numbers would come up. And here well, we I, mean, I don't know where the polls that they keep on saying they were neck and neck. I never saw that. You know, because polls can be manipulated. By those polls. 
yeah. you know, all the polls said Hillary would win and blah, blah, well, she did win the popular. Yeah. I think she won had certain people <clears throat> in Russia not interfered. But um, um, I just, I don't trust the polls. I mean, if there's a, if there's a glaring gap, yeah. But, you know, Biden's numbers are coming up, so. Yeah. Well, I think you're becoming more realistic in, in many ways, you know. Right. And to, I'm getting tired of people saying, well, he's old. I'm like, yeah, and he does so a lot Trump. of every day. So Trump. and Trump's only three years younger. And, you know, this guy, he works out. He rides his bike. He does what he does. You know. Joe Biden forgot more than most of those MAGAs ever, ever knew. <laughs> yeah. So well, he was, what, the youngest senator at the time when he came in? I'm sorry, say again? He was the youngest senator when he first started. Oh, yeah. He's been... 27, a... And he had just lost his wife and child. Right. He's an excellent statesman, I think. And somebody was saying, but he sounds like doddering old... I said, he stutters. Yeah, people say when he has those moments, I'm like, it's because he's collecting his thoughts. If I get nervous, I stutter. And sometimes, you know, I've got ADD and I have to stop and look to the side and collect my thoughts. I get it. It's not like he's doing a Mitch McConnell. It it doesn't mean that he's having like, well, I don't want to say this because it's not nice. But No, I said it's not like he's doing a Mitch McConnell. Thank you. (laughs) I said it. And I don't, and I feel bad for Mitch McConnell, by the way. I don't like his politics, but I feel bad. But he's not ready to give up either. <laughs> Do you know that someone sends his office turtle food every month? Sends what? His office turtle food. Turtle food? Because he looks oh, like a turtle. Oh, I see. <laughs> I got it. Duh, I just, it just caught me. <laughs> I won't do a Mitch McConnell right now because it's not his. It's all right. We still love you. Please don't. It's not good. <laughs> all right. <clears throat> Ellen Moore wants to know any insight into Canadian political spectrum uh, is conservatism taking over in Canada I don't think well you know I have been saying people in Canada need to watch what went on here because it could very easily happen there and so I do see a lot of the MAGA stuff like that's going on here well, crossing the border an ultra right conservative I call it racist bigoted BS I think you know ultra Christian nationalists they're going to try that in Canada um, and and you know there's going to be times there when it's going to look like they succeed but my favorite saying is just because it looks like they'll, the, they win the battle doesn't mean they'll win the war so Correct. You know, Canada, you know, people in Canada speak up, you know, vote. <laughs> their their system's a little bit different than ours, but still. Um, but I don't, I don't think the conservatives are going to take over. The ultra right wing conservatives are going to take over as big in Canada as it happens here for a while. Yeah. What do you I agree with you on this. That's because what, what I get is um, it's the miscommun- discommunication, dis, you know, the, the miscommunication, the false stories, all that kind of stuff. I feel people are not standing up for it in Canada after what they saw with what happened here. And they're calling them out right away on it. Not like just, oh, well, they didn't mean to say that. Well, let's hope that the people in Canada won't have the voter apathy that used to go on here because Canadians yeah. get out and vote. And we need to send most benevolent outcomes to all of them so that they do. Vote. <laughs> well, on my show, everybody knows my few favorite words. Vote, vote, vote. And not just for the big ticket items, but starting at the school everything. board. Everything. Starting with your local government for yes. everything. Vote. Even Rotary Clubs. Yeah, and research it. Research you're going to vote for. Mm-hmm. I do. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm sorry. That's okay. okay. Uh, Angelic Alchemy. Oh, I like that. Says, hi, Mountain Arthur. I'm really looking forward towards this collaboration. Thank you. Thank you. Can you please read on Jenna Ellis and how her pleading guilty will impact 45? Well, he probably had to go buy diapers. 
And then, and then I think when Mark Meadows was given immunity and he flipped, I'm sure he had to buy even more diapers. Yeah. And when Sidney Powell flipped, oh, she wasn't my lawyer. Oh, okay, right. Um, uh, you know, he's he's uh, put he should have invested in diapers because he's going to be buying a lot of them. Well, he's flipping out. Is what I get. Well, of course, that's why these people flip. He's, he's flipping out. Of course, you know, when he starts, well, she wasn't really my lawyer and blah, blah, blah. You know, when he starts saying stuff like that, I'll say crap like that, uh, that. Well, just like you said, I oh, never met Eugene Carroll, you know. I'm sorry, say again. Just like when he said, I never met that woman, Eugene yeah. Carroll. Yeah, right. Okay. And the moon's made of green cheese. <laughs> Delicious. <laughs> um. I mean, I don't know what's going on with Giuliani. He just kind of in suspended animation somewhere. I don't know if he'll flip, but um, well, but I, I have questions about the money Eastman. left. I've got question marks about Eastman. I mean, you know, a lot of people sing like canaries when they find out they're going to go to the slammer. Mm -hmm. No, I, I, I think they'll be doing. He'll be seeing some operetta. Thank you. And I, you know, and you hit on something that I've been saying for a long time. My guides have shown me is that if they're convicted in Georgia and then there's going to be people convicted in New York criminally. Uh, if if a Republican president gets in, he can't issue pardons because they don't Correct. have power state. over the states, just federal. Mm -hmm. So they're still going to catch their Waterloo in the states. So. Yeah. And loose cannon has no authority over that. <laughs> she well, me the like I said, she's out of the picture. She, she has. Picture. What was the good, the good the good witch of the West said? Be gone! You have no power here, right? Yes. yes. Be gone! You have no power here. And that's kind of what I see. So that was that was um, the the witch of the East. The witch of the East. The good witch. Of the East. Go away! You have no power here. Yeah, that's what I think is going to happen to uh, Loose Cannon. Somebody, go away. You have no power here. That is my favorite movie of all time, by the way. The Wizard of Oz. I used to be friends with Ray Bolger. Really? Yeah. He was Scarecrow. Yes. He was such a nice man. If I only had a brain. You know, he could really dance and he was good. Yeah. Robert, but Robert. He Robert Epstein Bolger. originally had the part of the Cowardly Lion. I'm sorry, a uh, uh, tin man. Tin man. But I guess they used aluminum powder and he was allergic to it. Well, actually, no, it was Buddy Ebsen that they Buddy brought Ebsen. in to be I'm the sorry. tin man. Right. And that they were using aluminum powder. And he was allergic. And the thing is, like, oh God, what's your name? Uh, played the Wicked Witch. Um, oh, the Wicked Witch of the West? Uh, Margaret Hamilton. Margaret Hamilton. Ray told me a couple of stories where there were a lot of mishaps with her yes. she was because her well her the the green makeup they use had lead in it yes and when there's that with the fireball and she appears the elevator didn't go down fast enough and right. she caught on fire right. another time is when she was riding on the um the broom and you see the smoke behind her he said she was sitting on a pipe she was what <laughs> sitting on a pipe and they were like blowing the smoke between the legs, and it blew up. Ouch. Yeah, and there were I mean, some fun stories. That. Oh, fun well, stories Epson in that movie. Yeah, Buddy Epson, the the paint, the aluminum powder or something. He had an allergic reaction to it. Yeah, and then I think um, Jack Haley. I think wasn't Jack Haley. The Jack guy? Haley took it over. Yeah. Um, and the Munchkins did they ever party? Oh my God! You know, Toto got paid more than the Munchkins did. Yes. Well, the dog's well, owner got paid. According to Ray, you know, they called them little people and right. they traveled all through Europe. Yes. And a lot of them were German. And so when they recorded Ding Dong, the witch is dead, they could not say a W. No. They said a V. Or a V. So they had to keep on saying, everybody thought there was uh, Ding Dong, the witch is dead. They thought, or they can't say okay. the because they don't have a th sound in German. It's a D or the, or a Z. Yeah, 
Ding dong, the bitch is dead. Ding dong. No. So they thought they were saying, you know, I'll be a potty mouth. They thought they were saying the I bitch is dead. Right. You know, but you know, and they had a redub and redub and redub. Um, there was a lot to that movie. Uh, and there were a lot of underlying themes, you know, mm-hmm. like um there was I think there was a whole gay thing kind of when uh, the cowardly lion when he says, um uh, how do you say I'm just a dandelion. Remember that? When he was singing. Um, it was classic. And I understand that suit that he had on was so heavy in the tail. They they had it on a wire. Yeah. But it was really hard for him to do the moves because the suit was so heavy. <laughs> yeah. And we're talking about the 30s. So, I mean, they did not have, you know, CGI like they do today. I mean, I remember I was with him at uh, the Bel Air Country Club. And this guy walked up to him with a brick and said, could you autograph this, please? And it was one of the original bricks from the Yellow Brick Road that his oh, father had worked on the movie. And he was thrilled to sign it. He you know, thrilled. when they were running through the poppies, that was a soundstage. But mm-hmm. the snow was asbestos. They were using, and they didn't know in those days, they were yes, using exactly. asbestos. Asbestos and lead-based paint on your face. They didn't know. They had no clue. You know, Um I met him through a company that I ended up volunteering. I ended up taking him to chemotherapy every, you know, when he needed it. And that's how I got to meet him. He's wow. a wonderful, wonderful man. Well, that's cool. Um, yeah, you know, it was, uh, I did, I did the voice of the Wicked Witch of the West once for an ice show. I always wanted to do it. <clears throat> and I'm kind of, I've got something going on, but. Let me see. I don't know if I can even do it right now with my voice where it's at, but I'll get you my pretty you and your little dog too. You know, I was like, whoa. And it was funny because I did three parts. So I would do like Scarecrow, Wicked Witch of the West, da, da, da. and to switch from one voice to the other, I get mixed up. So I said, no, no, no. Let me just read all of her parts. Let me read all of his parts. Let me read the, the doorman part. And then you and just it's called edit. <laughs> let me piece them together, which in those days they had to do it with real to real yeah oh so, anyway it was kind of I remember fun. those days yeah i i, I love voiceovers they were fun <laughs> and, the, and the voiceover guy would be don't pop your peas <laughs> because in the microphone you could hear that <laughs> that's why they've got things like wire mesh we didn't have a wire like, mesh no we didn't have anything they put a sock on it that was it <laughs> Anyway, okay. That was a nice trip down memory lane. I'm sorry? That was a nice trip down memory lane. Thank you. you. Okay. My friend Rosaire Hall asks, Hi, Rosaire. Do you or Arthur have any insight into deeply kept secrets of the Catholic Church that if revealed would cause an upheaval in the faith of the Christian world? She was with us in Italy. She says, fun trip, Mel can't wait for the next one yay uh well i've got one in africa one on the rhine river so i you know i i think (sighs) well you know like with mother Teresa, they found some of her the things she had written where she had really questioned you know the existence of certain things and and whatever and they didn't know if they should publish it or not right and they decided to because they said that might strengthen people who are having a crisis of faith. You know, I'm Catholic, not a very good one, but when you read about some of the stuff the Catholic Church has done in the past, like the Inquisitions and all of that, and, you know, and some of the popes, they weren't real holy. Mm-hmm. Um, what I do see coming, though, is we're going to have a pope, and I don't know if it's this one or the one after, that I see a third Vatican council that will reform the church. And at some point where priests can actually marry um, and women, um, maybe not in my lifetime, but at some point will be able to serve in the priesthood. Uh, Men could still be brothers, but not nuns and vice versa. So I do see, you know, the church being reformed again for the better. Um, But... You know, I see some deeply kept secrets coming out. 
but I don't think any anything would surprise us more than you know the scandals that came out within the past decade of what a lot of the what a lot was happening in the church. Right. <laughs> so, yeah. what do you think about it? <clears throat> I just remember one time Jean Dixon saying something. She said the best books on the planet about astrology are in the Vatican and no I'm one's going library. to see them. And what makes you think the Pope doesn't have his own? They all have three astrologers. Well, I have a, a blessing from a Pope from being an intuitive. I'm sorry? I have a blessing from Pope John Paul II. So, yeah. so it's, it's just... Um, I still think there's secrets that are going to remain secret. That's all. That's all my guys are saying is, is there's still secrets, and they're not. They're not going to get released right away. Well, I still think though that there's always something, but correct. to what degree? Right. Uh, let me just find the questions again. I lost my page here. Here we go. So I do see stuff coming out, but I don't think it would. Uh, I don't know if I'd call it an upheaval. But mm -hmm. I see the church being reformed again. And that's kind of the upheaval I see. If that's an upheaval, I don't know. Right. The second one was withdrawing a Pope Paul, wasn't it? I don't know if it was Pope John or Pope Paul that did, did the first that did the, the second yeah. Vatican Council. Back in the sixties. Yep, I remember that. I, I and, and I remember changed it. died. <laughs> yeah. Um and then uh, I was a Pope Paul or Pope John. I can't remember. But I remember going to mass with my grandmother before Vatican II. And the priest would never look at the congregation. He would always look at, at you know, his back was to the congregation. And it always sounded like he was saying, I play dominoes, you play dominoes, we play down. And I remember, you know, nobody spoke Latin, you know, but the missile was in Latin. And then the response was in red. Right. <laughs> And you have to memorize those. And um, I remember going to confession once, and I was just little. And the priest said, do you have any sins? And I said, I said, damn in hell. <laughs> I couldn't think of what to say. Yeah. Yeah. No. I was, I know I'm a reformed Catholic when every time a Star Wars movie comes on and says, may the force be with you and with you. And you <laughs> cross yourself? And so with you, you know? That's the end, so with you, right? And you cross yourself. Yeah. There's a joke, you know, what? what is what is the Pope saying when he's going like this at the Vatican? Hey, everybody, get off the grass. And we were just at the Vatican, and there is there was a sign there that said, please don't okay. walk on the grass. And I had to go, hey, everybody, get off the grass. You know, I had to do my Pope thing. <laughs> But, you know, whether or not you believe in Catholicism, I have to say I'm not a religious man. But when you go into the Vatican, especially St. Peter's Basilica or the Sistine Chapel, and you look at the ceiling and you see, you know, the creation or, oh, my God, or the final judgment, it, you know, painted by Michelangelo, I cried Be it oh, was because it was so... How can you not? Yeah, the art of it. Or... You know, Michelangelo's David, the way it flowed. We saw that in Florence. The man was a genius. Or when you see the Pieta, which is now behind glass, and you can actually see the veins in Christ's hands, and it's carved out of marble. The Pieta is a blessed mother, right? the Christ child. Yeah. I mean, not the Christ child, Christ when he died. He looks very young. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's just, it's amazing. Was now, when you, in the Ecstasy? Was that the name of the movie? It's the, I, I don't know. The Agony Ecstasy about the Pope versus Michelangelo. Oh, Michelangelo, you know, he was pretty shrewd himself. You know, he he made a lot of political statements without them necessarily knowing they were political statements. Right. <laughs> like he would put faces on certain, <laughs> like uncertain, uh, like the final judgment. There's like, you know, down here is hell. And he would put certain people's faces on there he didn't like. <laughs> It's no. it's like what they used to do during the Hayes Code, <laughs> get things by the past the censors. There was a church we found in Italy called uh, 
St. Ignatius, the Church of St. Ignatius. St. Ignatius started the Jesuits, and the Jesuits mm -hmm. are, are teachers. And I can't think of the artist's name right now that painted the whole church, the ceiling, the size. It took him 32 or 33 years, and he died after he did. He died young, but he painted in 3D. Wow. And you know, the Sistine Chapel is beautiful, but the way this artist painted, and it was around the time of Michelangelo, I think, I think that part of that ceiling is even better than the Sistine Chapel because it's there's a dome and you look at it from the ground and you actually think it's a dome. It's not. It's painted and you think it's a dome because it looks just like it's amazing. When is your next trip to Italy? I haven't planned one yet. Okay. Um, I, I love Italy. I do. I just love places and learning, but, you know, but my, but, you know, the art, it just, oh my God, it was so beautiful. And I would get tears because I was, it was, for me, it was a spiritual experience, but not religious, but just the art. It was felt so spiritual to me. It was like, wow. And the well, genius of being, these people that did it. I was being an empath. Yeah. You're just feeling that stuff off of the paintings and off of things. It's, it's amazing. Wait till you go to the Colosseum and you touch it. It's like, whoa. <laughs> or you're near it and to know what happened in there. It's like, wow. You know, that could be a Dougie Downer. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, or the Palatine Hill. And we saw where the Vestal Virgins were. And then I actually got to walk down this time to see the marketplace in the forum. And just to be able to stand there and to touch some of that stuff, it's like, and you get the psychic flashes. It was like, yeah. wow, <laughs> it's pretty amazing. I kept it to myself. I was too busy being mother in. Watch your passports. I was always walking the back. Come on, we can't get And we're walking and we're walking. <laughs> and we're walking. <laughs> but when I saw Michelangelo's unfinished pieces, you can actually mm -hmm. see the chisel marks in the statue's legs and stuff. And there's four of them. And there's like this, you know, two on each side. And then you, at the end of that, there's a, a large dome at the top. And then there's David. And it's like, oh my God. It was so amazing. It was like, wow. <laughs> um, okay, enough of that. <laughs> okay. Uh, <clears throat> let's see. Thanks, Rosier. <laughs> um, oh, this is good. Gary Briggs says, will there ever be a free energy machine that will replace the need for fossil fuel and still keep our power products heating and cars moving? I don't know if it's one machine, <laughs> but you know, Tesla was working. I was going to say, that's what Tesla was working on. Well, it wasn't, he was in his own way. He was working on, he was electricity. Working, he was working on transmitting electricity without wires. Yeah. And he was able to, but, but you didn't get the output you needed like at the other end of it, in other words. But in I, time, I believe yes on that question. A lot in of time. people are going to capitalize on his work, but I don't, just, I don't think it's just one machine. No. I think it's a group thereof. <laughs> yeah. But I do see at some point fossil fuels becoming obsolete within the next 50 or 60 years. Maybe even sooner. So, yay. You know, green energy, making things from algae. Uh, and people are wanting to, one, one person's got a question here, what should her daughter study? And I would say have her study green energy because that's what's going to be oh, yeah. the shape of the future. Oh, yeah. Um. So we both agree that there's some kind of group of things that'll make life easier. And also, <clears throat> well, replace the it won't be regulated. And it's not going to be charged. You won't have to pay for it. Oh, it's crazy sharks. She She's the one that asked a question. Oh, I love her. My daughter is deciding what to study. What job or field will be very hot in a decade? Energy. Energy. Clean energy. Okay. Okay, here's a good one. Jitterbug Tutu. I love that name every time I hear that. Hi, Auntie Mel and Arthur. Well, Tuberville trying to not fund the military and the looming government shutdown, would there be any kind of domestic or foreign terrorism, terrorism against the USA? Will America be caught off guard like Israel? 
No. I don't that, feel it. That's a no to both. No to both. Um, but don't forget, Chuck Schumer also got the three top guys he wanted to get in there confirmed by the Senate. It's just, you know, the right. the, the main, the commandant and everyone else, he was able to get them confirmed individually. Um, so we're not as behind the as we were before. But I'm not feeling... I mean, there's always pockets of crazy, but I'm not seeing, you know, like another 9-11 or something like that. No. Well, I do see acts of internal terrorism. <clears throat> you know, like, unfortunately, more mass shootings and things like that. See the Catholic, I crossed myself. <laughs> um, but, you know, um, as far as us getting caught with our pants down like Israel did or like we did on 911, I don't see anything of that magnitude. No, I don't no. get that at all. No, I don't see that. I'm also feeling that when <laughs> the new Senate comes in, in the House, that they're going to pass some type of resolution that one senator cannot hold all this stuff up. Mm -mm. That's right. Have that much power. It's It's going to be changed. And I see term limits put on, too. Yes. And for the Supreme Court at some point. And what I've been saying is I do feel with the next four to five years, I always see 13 Supreme Court justices. So do I. 12 and the main wow. reason is because, and I asked some guys, why, why, why? And, and it was always when they had voted in the nine Supreme Court justices, we had nine appellate courts. We now have 13 appellate courts. So that's how they're going to get it in. Good point. When you said 13 is my favorite number, but I got cold chills and I'm thinking, yeah, he's right on with that. Okay. Um, so Italiano, hey, como esta? How are you? Please read on Nancy Mace, Republican, South Carolina. Thank you. Do we have to? Why? Why? Um, well, she's as bad as Marjorie Taylor Greene. <laughs> um, you know, it's kind of like a snowball going down a hill. It gets to be a great big snowball and it can start an avalanche. But then at some point when it all dies down, it ain't a snowball anymore. And then it's a snowball in hell. <laughs> it can do a lot of damage or try to. Yeah. So far, I'm getting, I don't feel it. I don't feel her having control. For a while, it's going to look like she's getting a lot of impetus, like that snowball going down the hill. But then it'll just stop. It'll it'll run out of steam. <laughs> you know, like Ron DeSantis. Everybody was... <clears throat> Ron well, DeSantis. All the stuff that he's tried to put in place is going to go to the Supreme Court, and they're going to say, you can't do that. Like with Sarah Huckabee Sanders, you oh, can't God. use certain words. They're going to take that to the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court's going to say, you cannot stop someone's freedom of speech. Right. I mean, you can't keep me from saying pregnant woman. Hello. Or whatever. I don't know what she's what word she's trying to ban, but mm. ugly woman. One no, of those girls. And she's gonna be in deep doo-doo too. Oh yeah. Well, I said I said she learned a lot from her daddy and being in the White House, but it's all gonna catch up to her. The only thing I get angry with her is the whole thing about changing the child labor laws. That's horrible. You know, and if that was one of her kids, I'll bet you she wouldn't want it. No. Um, you know, she calls herself a woman of faith. If that's somebody of faith, then don't count me in that faith. <laughs> well, I don't know what Bible she's reading. Well, whichever it is, she better take it back. <laughs> yeah. Ask for a refund. Ask for her money back. God, can I have my money back? Because that Bible, I just. <laughs> All right. Uh, tone it, I think. Was Vander Sloot telling the truth with his recent confession on his killing of Natalie Holloway in Aruba in 2005? Yes. Yes. I was working as a reporter back then. I covered some of those stories. Yes. We always knew it was him. You know, it was funny back then when that happened. Um, Linda Petrina and I did a television show here locally in Chicago and it was syndicated for a while. And that had just come out about Natalie Holloway and Vander Sloot. And they asked us who we thought did it. 
and you can't come right out and say that we thought it was Vandersloot, but we did say at some point it was going to take a very long time that um, they would know for, for sure that he did it. Mm -hmm. But what I don't get is that if he confessed to it, why didn't they arrest him? Because a murder case has no statute of limitations. Of course, that was in Aruba, so I don't know their laws. I don't know either, but the thing is he did it. That's the bottom he line. He totally did it. Yeah. So um, he was telling the truth, yes. Uh, okay. <clears throat> Jabob, I can't pronounce some of these words. Jabobot, I think. Was the rocket that hit the Baptist hospital in Gaza on purpose because maybe Hamas is losing their grip on the people of Gaza? I don't know. I don't. I think it was just an errant rocket. It was an accident. Like when I asked my guides about it, they were just saying like rockets went off, something misfired, it fell from the sky. Well, you know, even though they they can target them with lasers and all that pretty pinpoint, sometimes things happen. And I don't know. Mm. I don't think it was that sophisticated of a rocket. But no, uh, no. I, I really I'm, I hear the word errant. It was an errant rocket. Yes, it was. It was not human. Exactly. Doing it on purpose. OK, Diane Anderson. Will America ever make law so that we won't have to allow insurrectionists to stay in Congress for three years after an ex insurrection? Well, the answer is no. I think if, if they're found guilty of a crime, then I see laws where they have to leave Congress or leave the Senate, provided it's a strong... I'm not talking traffic ticket. I'm talking like... No, that's what the 14th Amendment's about, though. That's correct. how they're trying to jump off the, uh, the balance. Right. But remember, in this country, people are still innocent until proven guilty. Correct. So you can't oust them just because they're accused of something no if they're accused of it that's one thing that they actually did it and indicted for it or whatever yeah gone well if they're indicted they're still innocent until they're convicted okay wrong word when they're convicted <laughs> an indictment yeah. doesn't mean i'm not correcting you but indictment doesn't mean that you're, you're right convicted. you're right I, I agree but if they are convicted yes mm -hmm. they're gone then bye <laughs> I see laws pass pass to that degree. Yes, I'm not talking about a traffic ticket or no, anything. No, no, I'm talking about like insurrections, right? You know, it was funny. Linda Grindle told me when I first met her, she said she had this thing that she saw like on a TV screen that said Donald Trump guilty of treason or insurrection. And I said what? And I was like. Honey, what have you been smoking? And she laughed. But look what's going on. It's yeah. It's gonna come out that there were secrets that he had that were given to other countries and sold. And they're gonna oh, yeah. trace it right back to him. That's gonna I, they're gonna be able to prove that too. Like, and I always felt that when Putin goes to the great beyond, a lot of stuff is gonna come out, including some tapes. People well, won't go to the great beyond. Well, I'm just seeing that as a. I know. <laughs> I was being cocky. I know. <clears throat> he pops his beyond, but it ain't to the great. That's for sure. He better take some. <clears throat> he better take some water because where he's going is going to be awful hot. Okay. The last one is Paul Ryan says, "Why haven't they taken Trump's passport?" Well, I'm sure that they probably, maybe they have, I don't know, but I'm sure that he's not going to go anywhere. And if he did, there's no country that would take him unless it's Russia. Or so, Saudi Arabia. I'm sorry? Or Saudi Arabia. Well, I don't, know. But I don't see it happening. I, do, I don't. In mm -hmm. fact, somebody asked me that last night, and I just said, as, if he were to get on that big lead plane because he has little hands, it has to be a big lead plane. And what size shoe does he wear? Um, told that 215 pound frame. Um, <laughs> that basically they would scramble and fighter fighter pilots would just you know force them to land. That's what I kept on saying. Whoever well, would fly yeah. the plane that would take him somewhere would also be under indictment for obstruction mm -hmm. and all kinds of criminal charges. So I don't see that happening. No, I don't see it happening. All right, so that's all the questions I've got.
This is wonderful, Mel. It's so good to see you. I know you're not feeling the best, so I appreciate you coming forward with this tonight. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do much for the rest of the week, but uh, for right now, I'm, <clears throat> excuse me, I apologize for the cough, you all. But um, anyway, this is we're going to do this on a regular basis. Okay. I have uh, no life. I can do this. <laughs> okay, good. In uh, fact, I did, I invoked you last night when I said, here I am, 66, reinventing myself. Who knew? Oh, Mel did. <laughs> reinvent myself every day. Well, it's an Aries trait. I like, do I ever wake up in the morning looking in the mirror thinking, who the hell are you today? No, you see. Um, my friend Rosier said I rebranded myself with doing the trips and stuff like that. I just like to travel and like to take people and see them have a good time and all of that. And, you know, the hostess uh, with the mostest. Well, there you go. Uh, <clears throat> all right, my friend, we'll set up another one. We won't, it won't be such a long interval. But let me get to feeling better. And I also like to do some collabs at some point. Sure. All right. All righty. You got it. So Thank you, Mel. how do they get a hold of you? Look for me on Wilshire Boulevard with the sign, sandwich sign. No, it's um, three readings. Yeah. I will read for food. <laughs> um, basically, it's just go to www Arthur easeyourmind.com E-A-S-E A-R-T-H-U-R E-A-S-E Y-O-U-R M-I-N-D Arthur Ease Your Mind Sometimes it feels like Arthur, you lose your mind but it's actually ease your mind and the phone number is 310-494-5952 Okay, and mine I'll put <clears throat> in the description down below. And yours too. Thank you. All right, this has been so much fun. Um, next time I'll be feeling better, I promise. Okay. All right, stay well and thank you. Thank you, Mel. All thank right. Thank you, everybody. Good night.